Welcome back aliens, this is Narvin Reddy from Telescope Learnings and in this video we'll talk about registration form. So we have already done with addition of two numbers, now we know how to use Android Studio, we know what is activity, we know about uh, different layouts, we talked about uh, relative layout. Now we also talked about how to create event on a button, right? In this video we'll talk about the design once again, so we'll talk about a layout and then we'll talk about linear layout in which we'll try to make this uh, this design here in which you have an image in between uh, you have a text field where you enter your name and then you will be having a radio buttons for gender then you'll be having your email ID and password and then we'll say this is once you click on this button it should uh, save your data so in this video we'll only talk about design in the next video we'll talk about the working of this okay so I, I will break this into two videos one will be design second for the working Okay, we, we may not achieve the same design, exactly the same, but we'll try to do it similar. Okay, so let's get back to Android Studio. Okay, that's Android Studio here. Okay, now once we got into Android Studio, so this is the activity I have already created. So the activity name here is signup.xml. Okay. Focus on this design. So let's go to the text view. So you can see we just have a linear layout here. So whenever you create a new activity, you will get a relative layout. Uh, we are going for a linear layout here. Okay. Now, so how to use linear layout instead of using relative layout? Just mention linear here. Now, whenever you work with linear, we have to mention that you are working with a vertical layout or you are working with horizontal layout. So if you see the output we want to achieve it is a vertical layout right so we have all the components one below other so to mention that we are working with a linear layout sorry vertical layout we have to mention that we have to mention the orientation here and the orientation we are working with is vertical now once once we have mentioned that now let's go for next so if you see the background color here so that's a blue color right so we need to set the color here so we can set uh, we can say color Oh, we have to set background here okay that's oh we have to use inside this bracket so that's background and then we can set any color so we can mention hash and we, if you mention this as f or 0000, 0, 0, 0 that will give you black color right and of course we don't want black color so you can see we got a black color so we want a specific color so i have already created a color here so you can create a color, you can mention the color here or you can, let's say you want to use the color throughout the application, the same color. So instead of writing that color everywhere, you can mention, you can create a variable or you can, yeah, you can call that as variable. So in your RES folder, you will be having values, inside values will be having colors XML in which you can mention different types of colors here. So you can mention a color name. So let's say this is my color name and that's my hash code for that color or not hash code, that's a hexadecimal code for the color, right? Uh, we want to use this color here, which represents a blue type of, I don't know, I'm not that good with colors, so we have some color here. So you can mention any color, you can define your own variable here. So let's say if I mention one more color and we'll name that color as, let's say, uh, button color. So I want to use this for all the buttons, we'll say BTN. And we can mention a hash code and let's say I want that color to be uh, red, so I will use FF 0000. zero, 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 zero. So that's, oh, is it extra zero there? Yeah. So we got a red color, right? So we can, this is how we can create new colors. So I'm, I want to use this BG color here, that's BG, which I guess this is cyan color. I don't know. Here, how to mention that? We can use add rich color. Okay. And inside color, you can mention it is as a BG. Once you have uh, mentioned BG there, let's go back to design and you can see we have changed the background color here. Now what next? We require an image now. So we'll take an image view and we can just drag it there. So take the image view and you can drop it here. You can see we cannot, it's not that visible, right? So first we have to include that inside a, inside a linear layout, it's already there. Okay, now we need to change something. So first we have to mention the height because we want to see something, right? So we can mention any height. We can say uh, 72 dp. I think that will be visible. And if I go to that, you can see the, the height is increased now and the width is dependent upon the image size. Now where to put the image? 
So when you go back to your project folder, so you have this project folder here. Uh, so whenever you get a project, you get this all these different files. And if I go to app, if I, inside that there's a S, src folder, inside src we have main, inside main we have res. So you can see whole hierarchy here. Inside app we have res, inside res we have uh, we have drawables. Now this drawable is useful for your images. So we, as we have seen in the theory video, uh, so we have a drawable where you can have all the images. Now the thing is you have to take one image. So I have already uh, have an image here which is telisco.png in which I have this image, weird looking image. Uh, that's, that's the logo of our website. Okay. So I want that image to be, I want to show that image on my, uh, what do you say, the design. Now how to do that? So we have to include this image on, in different different folders. So we have this HDPI folder, then we have MDI folder. So what is this? So every, so like every mobile phone, we have different different screen size, right? They will be having a different resolution. So depending upon your phones, you have to set the image size, right? So if you talk about this MDPI, this is 32 pix 36 pixels, 36 PX. Then we have, this is HDPI, which is approximately like a 72. Then we have XDPI, which is 96. So depending upon your screen size, you have to mention the image there. So I, do, uh, I don't want to do all those, all those things. What I have done is I have taken one image and I've inserted that image in all different folders. Okay, the same image with the same size. Okay, I guess we have also changed it. Let me check this resolution. If I go to the resolution, oh, it, I have just mentioned the high resolution here. Okay, so we have different, different size of images in different, different folders, right? So let me go back to my uh, Android. So if you expand this drawable, so we have all this uh, files here, uh, which is telisco.png and then we have mentioned the size here, right? I'd want the first image to be here. Okay, or we, it will automatically take that image this image here right so what we can do is we can go to text and how to fetch that image now so just let me just open the preview so that it will show you the uh, preview there now how to get that image is you have to mention src so we'll take we'll go to the image view and we'll type src and then here you have to mention that we are getting that image from draw, drawable folder so you have to mention at drawable and then you have to mention the name of your pick which is here telescope, right? And you can see we got the image there. Awesome, right? So it's that simple. So once we have mentioned the image, uh, the next thing we require is the edit text for name. So let me go back to my preview. So what we want, we want edit text, right, for this. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the design. Again, we can type the, the, those things here. So we'll go to design and from this, we'll pick edit text, which is text field, plain text and we'll drop it here. Okay, now once you got that field there, go back to edit text and now we have to mention something here. The first thing is we'll have to mention the name of that text edit. So we can mention name here itself. So we can double click it and we can mention the name and we'll say this is let's say input name. So now we have mentioned ID here and let's say enter, let's go back to the text. So we, we got, oh, we not got the ID yet. Oh, we got the ID here. Now once we have got the ID, now let's specify the type of the input. So that is, uh, that is text. Uh, what next? Now let's also set the color for this. So we can also set the text color. We can mention it as text color. So that's the property we have to use. Again, uh, we can mention the hash code here itself or you can mention the code from color. So we can take add color and you can mention, I want white. So I hope you remember it, we, we had white there. Uh, we had white, yeah, we have, we have white here. Oh, this, that's here, right? Now once you got that, if I enter some text here, it will be white. Now we also need to provide the, we need to provide something here, right? What is, why we are using that text field? Maybe for, for a name, maybe for a age. So we have to specify that. We have to specify a label there. So what we can specify is we can specify something as hint. So hint will act, act, like, act as a placeholder for the field that, and we can mention this is, this is for name. 
you can see we got name there now once we have done with the image and the text field or the edit text the next thing we have we require here is gender now if you observe this gender here is not just one component of a linear layout inside this also we have a layout right because uh, we have we have broken it to into two parts uh, so that's a linear layout in which you have horizontal layout so we have gender and then male female on the other side so the gender is the first part male female the second part and inside the second part we have a linear vertical layout uh, that's very complex right let's do it here so what i want uh, i want a linear layout so i will take a linear layout so that's linear layout okay and i will say this is oh that's that's weird okay i will i will mention that is wrap content for the width and the same thing for height so we'll say wrap content let's take it here so we got a linear layout and we have to specify the orientation first and how to specify orientation we can say orientation oh again i have messed with it so that's orientation and then we can specify the orientation as horizontal because we want gender and male female on the same line so we'll mention horizontal there and we can specify the margin so that we can at least it will be it will give it will keep some space between other components so we'll specify the margin so we'll say margin top as 8 dp and we can specify margin bottom so that's margin bottom as 8 dp again you, uh, what size you should take depend upon your experience depend upon your requirement so that's 8 dp for me now once we got this layout what we need in this layout we require two components one will be gender and the second will be again a linear layout so let's start with the gender first for a gender we require a text view so instead of dragging it we'll, we can directly type it here so we'll take a text view okay inside the, for the text view we have to specify the width oh, can we can we just permanently sh yeah go on so we have to specify the we have to specify the width here we'll say this is wrap content and the same thing we have to specify the height which is wrap content so that's the te text view and we also said we, are, we also said the text and we have to say this is gender and you can see we got gender there uh, but hold on something is not good now we'll set the text size so that it should be visible so we'll set text size and how much text size maybe 20 or uh, let's make it 18 oh now it's visible so that's good right so we got uh, gender there now once we got the text view the next thing we require on the right on the right side so let's go back to the preview so we what we want we want uh, male female right and that is in a linear that is a linear layout and in a vertical format so again in this linear layout we have a nested linear layout okay and then again we'll say in nested next nested linear layout we'll mention oh we don't require that hold on wrap content here that's wrap content and again wrap content here and uh, what next now we have to mention the orientation so we'll say this is orientation now and oh. so again the same thing it's orientation and we can specify the orientation as vertical and this in this layout we what we require now we require two radio buttons right and what's the, what's the advantage of using radio buttons we can select any one but unfortunately the property of radio button is uh, if you take two radio buttons on the, on the screen you can select both by default uh, it's because let's say you have just imagine you have four radio buttons on the screen two is for male female that's gender and two is for your uh, what maybe your favorite uh, sport maybe maybe cricket or football so if you have these two options so if you select male you should be also able to select your your sport right if you are if you're selecting maybe uh, female and if you are trying to select cricket so it will automate the female will be automatically deselected right we want two selection on the screen and that's why we have to create a group of radio buttons so the first male female will well, will be one group and second uh, the sport will be the second group so before creating radio buttons we have to also create a radio button group again you can do this all with the help of design so you can see we have a container okay, is container here yeah so in containers we have radio group so we can drag it here 
And inside this radio group, you can put radio buttons. Let's do it using text. So we'll say this is radio group. And we have to set two things again, wrap content, again, wrap content. So we got that. Okay. Now what next we need? We, we also require the ID here. So we'll mention ID and we'll specify plus ID and we can write, uh, this is my ray, radio group. Sounds good, right? Radio group. Now, once we have mentioned the radio group here, now next thing is we require two radio buttons, right? So let's create those two radio buttons. We'll say radio button. So that's radio button here. We have to set wrap content. Again, the same thing, wrap content. Okay. Now, what else? Uh, we need to also mention the label or the ID. Let's mention the ID first. We'll say ID equal to ID and we'll mention this as F for female. And we'll set the text now. And the text it should see show as female, right? Okay, that's not properly visible. We have to also set the text. So what we'll do is we'll say text size. Um, how much? Maybe 15 dp will do. I guess, yeah, that's visible, right? 15 dp will do now. And by default, it should not be selected. So we'll can, we can keep it as false. Or we can set, we can set one more property as false so that it will not be checked. So that's one radio button. We also want a second one. So we can just uh, take this one, copy and paste. Oh, that's not a copy paste, right? That's code reuse. We will say this is this ID is M and the text it should show is male. And the same thing, right? So we got male and female, right? So let's compare with the design we, we have okay, almost same. Okay. So that's done with the gender. Now next is email and uh, password. So what I will do, I will just pause the video. I will type those code for you and then I will show you instead of wasting your time. So let me just pause the video. Once we have added all the components here, so we have added edit text for email and edit text for password and a button, right? Now things to consider. So we have not taken a normal text field. I have taken a email address text field. Uh, the advantage of this is, let's say you when you're entering a normal data in the text field, it will give you suggestions, right, on the keyboard. But if you enter in email text field or email address field, it will show you the email address in your uh, keyboard. That's the advantage. The next thing is password. If you want to see that uh, circular symbols when you type your passwords, if no one, if you don't want to show others your password, you can use texty password here. That's a type. And uh, then we have created a button and inside a button we have mentioned the margin from the top so that we can get some space here. And that, that's it. That's, that's quite simple, right? So that's how we can create a design which, is, which looks like this. In the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work and we'll, once, you click, once you click on this, once you enter this detail, once you click on this button, create account, uh, it should show some data on the, com on the console. So that's what we want from the next video. So yeah, that's it. That's it from this video. We'll see in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.